Sport fam, there aren't many times I put 12 hours into a game that I have no obligation to review. I started playing this next title because I've been feeling pretty sick lately and needed a good game to curl up with on our Series X. If you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of Game Pass because of my short attention span with games. Having that many titles at my disposal anytime, while dangerous, genuinely helps keep me refreshed from the games we do play to review. So when by hour four I found myself completely sucked into this one, I was positive I had to share it with you. Hi, my name's Lil, and this is my review of While the Iron's Hot. At first glance, you might assume this one is just another pixel RPG adventure. And sure, yes, technically it is a pixel RPG adventure, but just another one to ignore in the vast sea of many? That it is not. While the Iron's Hot boasted a shockingly entertaining and engaging storyline that had me chasing people quite literally all over the map. The added bonus is that the NPCs all boasted such a range of personalities that I couldn't help but be interested in helping them. From the rat that just wanted to sew, to the guy that really just wanted to get some gains, it was comedic and fun the whole way through. To touch on the story as a whole, without too many spoilers, you're an aspiring blacksmith that's on a quest to become a mastersmith. They tell you the only way that they'll trust you with their mighty tools is if you prove to every village that you can handle a crafting feat of strength. Considering you're one of the only blacksmiths around, it does seem odd that they're making you jump through all these hoops, and at some point you start to wonder about the validity of the challenge. But those are mysteries for you to uncover if you decide to play the game. Story aside, the game offers a ton of crafting and management features as well. And that's likely what contributed to my overall enjoyment of the game. To move forward through the world and story, you'll need to obtain upgrades for your cart and hometown. You'll need, you guessed it, money. While you will secure some just from your questing naturally, you'll still need to complete some orders to rake in those extra few coins to buy the mage back home, a sparkly new mage tower. This leads us into the crafting itself, which is a rightful blast. You'll need to do everything from melting the ore, forming it on the anvil, grinding it down with your stone grinder, and piecing it together on the finishing table. There's dozens of different recipes to follow and a few different ore types that keep the crafting feeling fresh. Even towards the end of the story, I was learning new recipes that I'd been staring longingly at on the request boards, lacking the knowledge to fulfill them, so that was nice. The mini games are also simple enough during the crafting phases that I didn't feel annoyed or bored with them by 10 hours in. You're crafting a bunch, but not to the extent where it feels like a mini game simulator by any means. Also, as you level up your crafting skills, you can make the mini games easier and even skip the anvil one altogether, so that was a huge help for the monotony meter. To touch on the request boards, you'll find them in most of the major city areas. They'll have a couple requests that you can choose from, and the higher quality the item, the more it'll rake in. I love taking the three mining cart requests since it pays a ridiculous amount of gold. It of course takes a large amount of materials, but this plays back into the part about the mage tower and upgrading it perfectly. So let's talk about that for a second. While materials will feel plentiful towards the beginning of the game, if you want to be able to sustain them through the late game, you're gonna want to invest in upgrading your hometown. I found myself getting caught up in the adventure and then had to loop back and spend 30 minutes doing requests and upgrading all of my accommodations. By the end of it, I had a request board of my own, a potion shop, an adventurer I could equip with gear and send to fetch stuff, and a dwarf friend who was happy to wander around the world and collect ores and stone every day. There's great purpose to upgrading your little slice of heaven, and I'll just say that the more you do, the more goodies you'll get in return. So let that be something to look forward to. Since we mentioned wondering about the world, I'll add in the short section about that. I adored the different biomes, puzzles, and general areas to the map. Each new zone had something to figure out and puzzles to complete to truly unlock its secrets. Usually it involved upgrading your cart to even get to the new zone, but it does also include a bunch of mini areas with stories of their own. It was a splash of detail that kept me engaged with the entire world, not just our hometown and the cities. Speaking on the audio and visuals, I adore the animations. Despite being of the pixel genre, they've taken great care to create fun movements and silly interactions. Ducky laughs every time my guy pulls out his pickaxe out of his oversized apron and whacks a rock with it. It's good fun and any game that goes above and beyond with pixel art has my heart. Just because it's pixels does not mean it can't be beautiful. The audio offered the exact ambiance you want in a blacksmithing game as well, with the fantastic forge sounds and a great soundtrack to adventure to. I was in total heaven. Now, we'll finally find one thing to nitpick about, and that's sometimes you just gotta figure it out. I will say that sometimes the quests were vague, and it took me way longer to figure out that I could make Damascus ore than it should've. 
I naturally assumed it was just going to be another ore I'd find in a new mine. But alas, Damascus ore and glass billets need to be crafted, then smelted. I realized immediately with the glass one what I needed to do, as the quest was decently clear about it, but I must have skipped the quest altogether for Damascus or missed some hidden note, but for the life of me I did not see the recipe until it was way too late. My complaint here isn't that we have to craft billets, it's that sometimes the tooltips and quests aren't the most clear. Ultimately, I actually don't find this to be a bad thing, only because the game felt much more like a puzzle RPG, so if they had made things too obvious, it wouldn't have been nearly as much fun. I simply include this here as a warning to those who play, things can be easy to miss, so pay attention. I honestly can't really find anything else to be disappointed with. I genuinely wasn't bored with the mini games or dreading completing orders, and the story had me engaged all the way through. And it's at this point that I'll say, it has earned our Pillow Fort stamp of approval. I'll happily admit that I played this one through to the end, and I didn't have to, so let that stand to how much I enjoyed it. You also can't beat the fact that it's on Game Pass, so for those who already have a subscription, this is definitely one to check out. I will happily state that even if you don't, this game feels worth its price, and I would not have been disappointed to have paid for this, so take that for what you will. That's going to be it for this review, but make sure to leave a like and tell us your own thoughts on the game in the comments. Feel free to ask any questions, as we'll be more than happy to answer them. Before you leave, please consider hitting that subscribe button, as there's always something new to find here at our fort. Thanks for watching, and until next time.